today's video is going to be about two smaller solenoid valves that can be used to make up air cannons. In the background we have my 177 caliber BB cannon based on a 24 volt AC quarter NPT solenoid valve. In the foreground we have a test cannon that I made up specially for this video, very bare bones. It has just a small air reservoir. Then it has again a 24 volt AC solenoid valve. One problem I've run into with these little 24 volt solenoid valves is that at higher pressures they will not open on AC. So I'm going to demonstrate this problem and then show a quick fix workaround for it. For today's demonstration I've prepared this little power supply. It consists of this transformer which is connected to the uh, 120 volt line AC. It steps down the voltage to 24 volts. Now notice that uh, from a scrap TV board I've gotten a uh, fairly hefty little diode, a 3 to 5 amp diode, and I've grabbed a electrolytic capacitor. This one is a, uh, what is it? 200 volts, 470 microfarads, uh, that capacitor. So basically this can give me 24 volts AC, or it can give me uh, DC voltage rectified by the diode and filtered by the capacitor. This is going to be the power supply for the test cannon over here with its 24 volt AC rated solenoid valve. Here I've got the power supply set up and running to deliver 24 volts AC, which is what we're supposed to run the 24 volt solenoid on. When I complete the circuit here, you should be able to hear the solenoid clicking open and closed in the video. There is no air pressure applied right now, this is just a valve test. Valve is opening quite well at uh, zero pressure. In this next test, I'm going to bring pressure up to about 100 psi, and then I'm going to trigger the solenoid valve again using AC like I'm supposed to. Okay. There is 100 PSI, and we fired. 100 PSI again. And again, it works very reliably at 100 PSI. Let's move on up to 150 PSI, and again attempt to trigger the valve using 24 volts AC. One fifty PSI. Let's do it again. Gauge is past one fifty. Fire. And a third time, one fifty. Fire. Seems quite reliable so far. Let's bring the pressure up to 200 PSI and try this. Okay, 200. Still fired. Let's try it again at 200. Half 200. Stubborn! Oh, little tick. And when the pressure was reduced a bit, it fired. Let's go to 200 again. This doesn't seem so reliable anymore. Okay, we've got about 200. 
valve is buzzing, doesn't want to open with AC applied. But a second touch opened it. It's not reliable now at 200 PSI. Let's go up to 250. Let's keep going here. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 PSI. I'm getting buzzing, buzzing, very reluctant to open. Finally it did. Let's go back up to 250. But it appears that at 250 PSI, this would not be a reliable firing air cannon. Doesn't want to let go. Well, let's bring it up to 300. Well, there we go. Quick 50 pounds more. Well, it just will not, will not, will not release for me right now. Useless. But yet we need the higher pressures to get to good velocity and good power from a small bore air cannon. Let's find ourselves a solution to this problem. Okay, I've gone back to looking up the little test power supply I've made here. Now, instead of taking our power off the 24 volt AC terminals where my fingers are, we're going to take DC power from the terminals of the capacitor. So this uh, white wire with the green clip is hooked up to the negative side. The red wire and clip is hooked up to the positive side. I'm now going to use the DC from across the capacitor to trigger the solenoid valve and we'll see what the difference is. Now that we're set up to use DC to fire the solenoid, I'm going to bring the pressure up to 300 pounds, 150, 200, 250, 300 PSI, we could not fire it here on AC before. Here goes DC. Immediate firing. Let's go back to 300 PSI. 200, 250, 300 PSI, and fire. Fired perfectly. Let's do it a third time. 200, 250, 300 PSI, and fire. Perfect. DC is working great. Let's go to 350 PSI for a test. 200, 250, 300, 350, and fire. Perfect. Let's go back to 350 for an encore. 250, 300, 350, and fire. No problem. Let's go to 400 PSI. 200, 250, 300, 350, 400 PSI on DC, fire. No problem. Let's try 400 again. Okay, 400 PSI and fire. No problem. Let's go up to 450 and give it a shot. 300, 350, 400, 450, and fire. Again, no problem. So the solution to getting these little quarter NPT 24 volt solenoid valves such as this one, to fire at pressures above 200 pounds or so, is to operate them using a simple DC supply attached to your 24-volt transformer. 
Hopefully this little bit of information helps a few fellow air cannon experimenters. For this last test, I've loaded a 25 caliber BB into the 32 inch long 25 caliber barrel that I've attached to this test cannon. We're aimed at a pine block at point-blank range. I'm going to charge up to 450 PSI pressure and then fire using the DC supply. 250, 300, 350, 400, 450 PSI and firing of a BB on DC. Now, there went the pine block off the bench. Well, I'll go get it and we'll have a look. Well, here's the pine block as picked up off the floor after that shot. We can see that the quarter inch steel BB is embedded in the pine block about a quarter of an inch below the surface of the wood. This would have easily gone through a paint can. Hopefully this little video is of help to anyone who wants to use smaller solenoid valves such as these quarter NPT 24 volt valves to make a small air cannon like I have. If you're lucky enough to have had a TV or a few TVs as targets like I have, you might want to save the main board when you're finished for its source of electronic components such as the diode and capacitor that I use to quickly make up the simple DC supply in this video. For instance, these two brown capacitors here would be perfect candidates for salvage. They are 1000 microfarad uh, units rated at 250 volts. Now there are many diodes that could be salvaged from one of these large scrap electronic boards. For instance, this large black one near my finger, and there's another one near it that you can't see right now, maybe I'll move the camera, but this diode, for instance, would be perfect for what I showed for a power supply. Here I've moved the video camera and you can actually see that there are two diodes that could easily be cut off with pliers or if you wanted to be fancy they could be unsoldered from the board. Two diodes that would make two power supplies with the two large capacitors we saw earlier. And then, uh, of course, the board has lots more capacitors and diodes on it. These things are great salvage. Keep them.